Hi everyone, my name is Erin O'Leary. I'm a senior data analyst with the statistics team here at the Division of Healthcare Quality Promotion. And today I will be presenting on our two new antimicrobial resistance option benchmark metrics, the standardized resistant infection ratio and the pathogen specific standardized infection ratio. Our objectives for this presentation are to provide an overview of these new AR benchmark metrics, describe the methods we use to develop SRIRs and PSIRs, summarize the final statistical models, and provide guidance on interpreting SRIR and PSIR reports in NHSN. So we developed our two new AR benchmark metrics in 2021 and 2022 using 2019 data reported to the NHSN AR option as the baseline year. The first metric, the SRIR, is the standardized resistant infection ratio. The second, the PSIR, is the pathogen specific standardized infection ratio. And both metrics are observed to predicted ratios, just like SARS, SIRs, and SURs. SRIRs allow facilities to compare their number of observed hospital onset resistant infections for eligible phenotypes to the number predicted based on 2019 baseline risk adjusted AR models. The SRIR is calculated as the number of observed resistant infections divided by the number of predicted resistant infections. Observed resistant infections, the numerator of the SRIR, are the number of resistant hospital onset isolates reported to NHSN for one of the following phenotypes, carbapenem resistant enterobacteriales, extended spectrum cephalosporin resistant enterobacteriales, fluoroquinolone resistant enterobacteriales, vancomycin resistant enterococcus, fluoroquinolone resistant pseudomonas aeruginosa, multi-drug resistant pseudomonas aeruginosa and methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. Predicted resistant infections, the denominator of the SRIR, are the number of resistant hospital onset isolates for the same phenotype predicted for a hospital based on negative binomial regression modeling applied to nationally aggregated AR data. Hospital-level SRIRs can be calculated for three specimen sources, blood, urine, and lower respiratory tract. In order for your facility to calculate a SRIR, they must have reported at least one hospital onset isolate for the eligible organism from the correct specimen source during the specified time period of interest. For example, to receive an SRIR for vancomycin-resistant enterococcus, in quarter three of 2022, a facility must have reported at least one hospital onset enterococcus isolate from blood in month seven, eight, or nine of 2022. PSIRs allow facilities to compare their number of observed hospital onset infections for eligible organisms to the number predicted based on 2019 baseline risk-adjusted AR models. And PSIRs can be calculated um, as the number of observed infections divided by the number of predicted infections. For PSIRs, observed infections, the numerator, are the number of hospital onset isolates reported to NHSN for one of the following eligible pathogens or pathogen groups, enterobacteriales, enterococcus, pseudomonas aeruginosa, or staphylococcus aureus. Predicted infections, the PSIR denominator, are the number of hospital onset isolates for the same pathogen or pathogen group that are predicted for a hospital based on negative binomial regression applied to nationally aggregated AR data. Hospital level PSIRs can be calculated for the same three specimen sources as SRIRs, and that's blood, urine, and the lower respiratory tract. And for a facility to calculate a PSIR, they must report at least one hospital onset isolate, um, any organism, from the correct specimen source during the specified time period of interest. For example, 
to receive a PSAR for enterococcus in blood in quarter three of 2022, a hospital must report at least one hospital onset isolate from blood in the month seven, eight, or nine of 2022. Um, so why were these metrics developed? Um, SRIRs and PSIRs enable hospitals to compare their rates of resistant hospital onset infections in the case of SRIRs and hospital onset infections in the case of PSIRs to a national average. And using incidence and prevalence instead of the percent susceptible for benchmarking minimizes the bias of selective or cascade antimicrobial susceptibility testing and reporting. SRIR phenotypes and PSIR pathogens were selected by a group of internal CDC subject matter experts. Target phenotypes were selected because they are relatively common air threats that could spread widely in a hospital setting. They are of interest to hospital infection prevention and antimicrobial stewardship programs. And because benchmark metrics for these selected phenotypes could enable interfacility comparisons. Rare AR phenotypes were not prioritized for benchmarking, but they are still worth investigating if seen in other NHSN reports. So moving on to methods, the data sources for these metrics included 2019 AR option data reported to the AUR module as of August, 2021, and 2019 patient safety component annual hospital survey data um, which was used for facility level risk adjustment. And models were built at the facility year level. Facilities were excluded from both SRIR and PSIR models if they reported fewer than nine months of AR data in 2019, or if they were missing patient days. For SRIR models, facilities were excluded if they reported zero admissions, if they were missing antimicrobial susceptibility results for more than 10% of hospital onset isolates for the organism and specimen source in question, and separately isolates were excluded if susceptibility results were missing. Facility level factors assessed for risk adjustment included facility type, number of beds, number of ICU beds, percentage of ICU beds, medical school affiliation, medical school affiliation type, hospital length of stay, and in the case of SRIR models only, community onset prevalence. We use negative binomial regression to assess associations between rates of resistant hospital onset infections and potential risk factors for the SRIR models and rates of hospital onset infections and potential risk factors for PSIR models. Models were created for each phenotype in the case of SRIRs and for each pathogen or group of pathogen for PSIRs by specimen source. So this resulted in the development of 21 SRIR models and 12 PSIR models. The number of hospitals included in each analytic data set differed depending on which phenotype or pathogen the hospital reported for each, for each specimen source type Facility types represented in 2019 AR data included critical access, children's, general acute care, long-term acute care, oncology, psychiatric, inpatient rehabilitation, surgical, women's, and women's and children's hospitals. Not all of the, these facility types were represented in the referent population for all models. So more rare phenotypes with fewer facilities reporting may only have had a few facility types represented in the reference population. The following tables show a summary of isolates for each eligible SRIR and PSIR um, phenotype and pathogen type. The first two tables are broken down by phenotype and specimen source. So for the example of carbapenem resistant enterobacter alleys in blood, which is that first row, there were 181 facilities that met eligibility criteria and were included in the model. There were 91 resistant isolates reported in 2019 from these 181 facilities out of 2,370 total isolates tested. And the pooled resistant isolate rate was 0 0.007 resistant isolates per 1,000 patient days. 
The next slide shows the same information for vancomycin resistant enterococcus, fluoroquinolone resistant pseudomonas aeruginosa, multi-drug resistant pseudomonas aeruginosa, and methicillin resistant staph aureus. And then this last and third isolate summary table slide shows information for PSIR models. Um, data is displayed for enterobacteriales, enterococcus, staph aureus, and pseudomonas aeruginosa. There is no resistance data here since PSIRs are developed for pathogens or pathogen groups rather than drug-resistant phenotypes. Enterococcus is the, in the lower respiratory tract, was the least commonly reported pathogen with a pooled isolate rate of 0.018 isolate per 1,000 patient days, and enterobacteriales in urine was the most commonly reported with 0.862 isolates per 1,000 patient days. So moving on to some of the model details, the following two tables show a high-level summary of risk adjustments made for each um, SRIR and PSIR model. The first three left-hand columns um, on this SRIR table list the 21 SRIR models, and then the rest of the columns show which risk factors were assessed during the modeling process. A check mark indicates that factor was included in the final model as a risk factor. Community onset prevalence was a factor most often found to be associated with rates of resistant infections. Facility type, medical school affiliation, and affiliation type were not found to be significant predictor predictors of resistance rates for our select phenotype specimen source combinations. For PSR models, Hospital length of stay was a factor most often found to be predictive of infection rates. For example, for enterobacteriales in blood, shown in the first row of data, number of ICU beds and hospital length of stay were the two factors included in the final risk-adjusted model. In other words, number of ICU beds and hospital length of stay were the two factors that were found to be associated with rates of enterobacteriales in blood. We plan for SRIR and PSAR reports to be included in the NHSN application later this calendar year. The release will add two new reports, one for SRIRs, which will have 21 tables listed in the report, and a separate report for PSIRs, which would have 12 tables displayed in the report. Reports will default to the facility quarter level, but will also be available at the half year, year, and cumulative levels. And once released, facilities that report eligible AR data will be able to generate both SRIRs and PSARs back in time um, to January of 2019. And now we will go through how to interpret SRIR and PSAR values. Because both metrics are observed to, predict, to predicted ratios, SRIR and PSAR values are always greater than or equal to zero. So similar to SIRs, lower, so lower values are considered to be better as hospitals are trying to decrease their number of infections. For SRIRs, a value less than one indicates the rate of resistant hospital onset infection was less than what was predicted. A value equal to one indicates the rate of resistant hospital onset infections was resistant to what was, or sorry, equal to what was predicted and a value greater than one indicates the rate of resistant hospital onset infection was greater than what was predicted. For PSARs, a value less than one indicates the rate of hospital onset infection was less than the predicted value. A PSAR equal to one indicates the rate of hospital onset infection was equal to the predicted value, and a PSAR greater than one indicates the rate of hospital onset infection was greater than the predicted value. We will now walk through an example SRIR calculation. So if facility A reports four hospital onset vancomycin resistant enterococcus or VRE events in blood during the first quarter of 2022, there were six events predicted for this facility during this time period based on the 2019 baseline SRIR VRE blood model. So facility A's 
led hospital onset BRE SRIR for quarter one of 2022 is calculated as four observed events divided by six predicted events for an SRIR of 0.667. To interpret this SRIR value, we say that facility A's number of hospital onset VRE isolates from blood in quarter one of 2022 was 0.7 times what was predicted. If a hospital receives a SRIR value of zero, that indicates the facility reported the organism of interest from the specimen source of interest during the correct time period, but the organism was not resistant to the drug or drugs specified. For the example of hospital onset VRE in blood, if a hospital reports 10 hospital onset enterococcus isolates from blood during the time period of interest, and all 10 isolates were reported to be susceptible to vancomycin, the HO, VRE, blood, SRIR would be zero because there were zero observed resistant infection events. And there are various reasons a SRIR value could be missing in an NHSN report. First, if there were no specimens collected from the specimen source of interest during the time period of interest, that facility is not eligible to receive ASRIR and the value would therefore be missing in the report. Similarly, if there were no organisms of interest isolated from the specimen source of interest during that time period, the facility is ineligible to receive a SRIR and the value would be missing in an interest in application. Lastly, values will be missing if the minimum precision criteria for the number of predicted AR events is not met. For example, if a facility is looking at their quarterly VRE and blood table, and the number of HOVRE infections predicted is less than 0.3 for that quarter, then the minimum precision criteria is not met and SRIR value would not be shown, even if the facility does actually report hospital onset VRE events for that quarter. And now we will review an example PSIR calculation. So facility A reports 100 hospital onset staph aureus or SA events in blood during 2022. Our 2019 baseline SA blood model predicts that this facility would have 50 hospital onset staph aureus events in 2022. Your hospital blood um, SA PSAR for 2022 would be calculated as 100 observed events divided by 50 predicted events for a PSIR of two. We can interpret this value by saying facility A's number of hospital onset staph aureus isolates in blood in 2022 was two times what it was predicted. Just like the SRIR reports, there are cases where PSIR values may be zero or missing. Using the example of staph aureus in blood, a PSIR value of zero indicates a facility reported at least one blood specimen in 2022 but that no staph aureus was isolated. A PSAR value could be missing if there were no specimens collected from the specimen source of interest during the time period of interest. If there were no hospital onset isolates reported from the specimen source of interest, or again, if the minimum precision criteria was not met. And that is all that I have for today. Thank you for your attention and interest in our new AR benchmark metrics. If you have questions, please feel free to email the NHSN help desk at nhsn at cdc.gov. Thank you.